Hey everybody, welcome. This is our fourth Sport Med BC webinar in support of the 2017 Sunrun in Training program. And welcome today because this means you are ready. Just think back, you're ready for the big day. In January, we started. We started tentatively, easily, and we comfortably progressed for three months through all kinds of weather challenges this year throughout the province. And here we are. Finally, the sun is shining, at least today while I'm talking through this webinar. And this is, of course, Coach Lynn, your run walk coach. And I've had the privilege of guiding you online throughout these last three months. And I know from my visits around the province that most of you are truly ready to rock. You are ready, you are prepared to complete this Vancouver Sun Run on Sunday in a way that is perfectly right for you. So I'm so excited. Do I sound excited? I am. I've been doing this thing for, oh my gosh, 22 years now. And I know I'm dating myself, but every year, it's astounding the successes that are going on out there in all of the clinics throughout the province. And leaders, oh my gosh, they are the ones in the field working with you directly. And I do communicate with them, but it's all about those wonderful leaders that you have that guide you right on directly as you prepare for this wonderful foot race, the largest 10K in all of Canada. I stood there on the starting line some 33 years ago. Can you, believe, can you believe it? Sometimes I can't myself. I've never enjoyed my running more. And it's because of the inspiring stories that, that are resulting from the Sun Run in training clinics and the folks preparing for this wonderful event. So joining me today is a gal I've known and certainly heard of throughout my years as a performance athlete. And she comes from Kelowna via Ottawa and other places, I'm sure. Shauna, you're going to share some really great ideas as we prepare for this big day on Sunday. Yes, thanks, Lynn. I'm really excited to be uh, participating in my home province now after living so many years in Ottawa. Oh, so awesome. So Fantastic. awesome. It's awesome to have your expertise because as a performance athlete and all the years of experience that I've got from that end of things, I know what it takes in a practical sense to ready yourself for something you've been preparing for. And you, of course, have that, that great deal of education to support what I know to be true in a practical sense. So really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Thanks for inviting me. Um, you know what, gang? It wouldn't happen without all of our sponsors. Our newest one this year being the Ford Motor Company. And I'll tell you what, I, I've heard you're going to be in BC Place Stadium, if not beforehand picking up your package, then afterwards when you've completed the event. And I've heard there's some test driving going on in there. There will be. And meanwhile, directly for the Sunrun and Training Program itself, if it weren't for all of the Sunrun stores and their partners, we wouldn't have the clinics that we do and you wouldn't have the support that you have. So thanks to all those folks. And of course, you will see them in what we affectionately call the cage, the great big store in BC Place Stadium where they'll have all the cool gear that you'll deserve to purchase right after you've finished the Vancouver Sun Run. So this is it. Oh my gosh, it really is. And how are you doing? I hope you're answering in inwardly thinking, I'm great. I feel so good. I feel prepared. I feel ready. And you know, if you if you're having any kind of thought process like I don't know if I did enough. I didn't do enough. I missed too many sessions. The weather was too bad. I didn't always feel great. Guess what? You would absolutely be normal. Whether you are at the front of the pack or whether you are just off the couch, all of the things that you go through in terms of mental preparation are identical and those anxieties some of us experience them in different ways those are things that are are totally normal and that's what we're here today to sort of help you work through some of that and to recognize that you're not alone in all that you feel so here we go shauna mental tips where mental we, tips yeah, where on we the home stretch well you know i thought we would just maybe break it down um and we're going to go into these as we continue on through the webinar 
but these were just four that come back time and time again after all these years in working in support of both high performance sport but also sport participation for folks all across the the spectrum of participants and so I know we're going to have a lot of first time Sunrun listeners um, so these four ideas or concepts or tools that you have that are free that are already packed in there somewhere. We just got to make sure that you pull them out. And it's great because I know that these are things that Lynn uses and she already had prepared a ton of information and has spoken about many of them um, through the years as well. And I'm sure Lynn, you've seen their success uh, in working with a wide range of motivation and personality profiles, I bet, in all your years. Oh yeah, I mean, even from whether you're an invited elite athlete or as I say, you're just off the couch and taking steps towards better health with a, you know, a tentative approach, wondering, can I do this? Am I crazy? Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. All of those sorts of things come to mind, especially and are especially heightened, you know, in the days prior to the main event. Absolutely. And so, so for these four, I'm going to speak to a couple of them in a little bit more detail just for a few moments, just give you some quick and dirty facts on them. And then we're going to talk a bit more about the power of visualization as it goes on. Lynn's prepared some great support for that and some visuals as well. But we'll start with maybe the idea of what Lynn was just alluding to as we launched into this idea, your self-talk, some of those little voices in the back of your mind that are saying, okay, I skipped too many weeks or, oh, okay, I feel like I'm getting a cold or, oh, wow, do I really have the right shoes selected? Or, you know, what if I don't hit the time? What if, and they're just, they come and go and some days might be better than others. And like Lynn said, they're absolutely typical, but it's really important to try to think about having a little bit more of a sense of control over those messages when they hit on race day. So have some to counteract that negative self-talk that's trying to get you um, to defeat yourself and have a few that are going to be your armor that are going to take you through to the finish line so you get to celebrate and and really be proud which is what you deserve. So I sometimes get my clients to write down some of their biggest fears or some of that dialogue that's been flooding them in those final weeks and then talk to themselves as though they would their best friend or colleague that they might have joined up with in your running group. How would you talk them through it? What would you say to them? It's like, come on, you've put in the work, you're prepared, you can do this. You know, you're tough, this is amazing. Let's embrace it. You th that's what you would say to them. So we gotta turn that talk around and use it on ourselves in order to main that, maintain that healthy perspective. Visualization, we're gonna talk a bit about um, in the future in the next few minutes but it's really seeing yourself being successful seeing yourself in the middle of that crowd feeding off the energy and really putting yourself on different parts of the race course and Lynn's done a great job of laying that out for you in a few moments so we're going to get in more detail in a few moments I'm a huge fan and I can just tell because of Lynn's personality that a sense of humor is really important to her and I hope it's important to all of you on this call. I know it's what gets me through life and um, I participated for many years. Ottawa has a similar run. We have a, a whole race weekend that we do and I can recall a number of times, you know, you see the first time runner might be someone in their 50s or 60s. They've worked really hard and you see this kid just blow by this, like, oh. you know, an eight-year-old. <laughs> and I'm sure you've day. seen it too. Isn't it awesome? You know, they blow by you. And so a story, I did an interview with Vancouver Sun and I actually gave the story that was quite personal. It was in fact, my daughter Zoe, um, who was about eight at the time, and she's trying to encourage this man. I would have put him in his early 50s, and he was struggling a bit, and she's like, come on, mister, you can do it. Oh. And um, instead of him really being defeated or, oh, are you kidding me? It was like... Um, he just, it took him a second to digest it, and then he burst out laughing. And I, I really do think that that helped to take him through the end of the race so taking those little moments um, whatever might fly at you and turning getting a smile on your face if you can at all work it <laughs> into a humorous um, perspective yeah I was I was laughing to myself too about your um, great advice on self-talk some people do it naturally we all have a voice inside you know and there's actually two voices one is really positive and the other one is usually just 
not so positive and you have no. to find that one you got to fight with that one who likes to creep up and say things that aren't quite what you'd like to hear and sometimes I think about the self-talk I will talk out loud I'll be out on a walk or a run it could be about life it might not be about my running or performance at all although it was at one time or another and if trees could talk and could say what's <laughs> coming out of my mouth I'll tell you it'd be pretty funny but it talks <laughs> around if you don't have a friend talk to a tree they're great exactly yeah trees are awesome trees yeah just the open fresh air and nature and the birds are awesome um what I try to do because sometimes my clients will fight me a little bit and it's my job to challenge them to work through those barriers but they'll say look you know I have these messages for a reason like I'm in pain or I don't believe it and I'm and so what I turn around and say is you know even if that thought feels really factual in that moment is it constructive is it productive because if it's not productive and it's not going to help you put one foot in front of the other, then we got to figure out something to replace it. So, yeah, say, <laughs> say that to the tree and then come up with something else. So, yeah, and here, so for this next slide, this is a great depiction of an idea for visualizing, just really inserting yourself into the equation. So there are myriad of images and Lynn's going to bring up quite a few here throughout the rest of the webinar um, that are going to help you really see yourself as being confident and part of this amazing energy that you are you're going to be in the midst of on Sunday and then and the last point being just being prepared mm -hmm. so if you feel prepared and Lynn's got some great checklists and sort of some final head-to-toe check-ins the more prepared you feel the more in control you're going to feel and frankly you're going to have a better experience. So I'm going to leave it to Lynn to take us through some of those amazing um, last minute reminders of how you're going to get organized because that's going to put you in a great headspace too. Oh, thanks, Shauna. And please just jump in because we've we're both coming at it from the same kind of the same place and different perspectives, but the same place exactly. And sounds good. The organizational side, as you suggested, it does help to just sort of have that mental checklist so that you're not feeling rushed and uh, just able to enjoy the whole experience because it is I think that's probably the biggest part about the Vancouver Sun Run is it is truly an experience um, yeah hang on I just have to I have to have a sip I'm just got a little frog in my throat take it away Shauna with what it's like from the front of the pack to the back of the pack and the similarities Right. So the front of the pack, I mean, you're dealing, you've got the image here. You're dealing with highly motivated individuals, obviously. They've done a ton of preparation. Um, they've put in all kinds of time, also a lot of emotional um, and, and cognitive um, energy has gone along with all that physical output. But they have to work just as hard to fight through some of those doubts and that negative self-talk, um, performance and competitive uh, anxiety that they might face. They have to have very um, a lot of organizational skills and a regimen in order to really execute the way they've planned and all that they've prepared for. So it's not so different from what you're dealing with. It, they're just doing it on another scale and many for the ones that are professional, um, it's their day to day. So now I love the, oh, great slide, game face. Let's get it on. <laughs> Let's get it on. And it's true, whether you're just off the couch or whether you're at the front, the process is just so similar. And I know I've, I've learned to be a participant and I've probably never enjoyed my running more to tell you the truth. Um, but I was thinking the funny part now is just that I once lined up at the front end, but those guys will be finished literally in well in under 30 minutes and they will be finished before most of us have even started to move in that colossal stream of humanity out there. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> remind yourself you are you are prepared. And just on the flip side, if you're listening and you are one of those who's thinking, no, I'm not really. I didn't finish all the sessions. Um, you know, I was interrupted for whatever reason. My advice to you at this point is that there's no kind of training or efforts that you can put in that are going to make your experience any better on Sunday. So don't feel like you've got to make up for lost time. Go out there and somehow do it ahead of time. Uh, put in an extra workout. It's just not going to help you. Just remember that you need to do it in a way that's right for you. So if that means your intention was to run a certain time but you haven't put the prep in, then just enjoy it and walk. Just dial it back. It's the experience of it all. 
and take that pressure right off you because you know what there's a 5k a 10k there's a race every weekend so you can you know decide to prepare for something else if this isn't the way it's meant to be for you <clears throat> that's great advice um remind yourself of all the little things that I've shared with your leaders who I know have shared with you okay be your leaders hear your leaders voice in your head so that while you're out there putting one foot in front of the other just think about that lightness in your step think about being tall think about your arms they're always gonna get your legs going okay those little tips that you've spent three months now going through whether you've been walking or whether you've been running and walkers you're the endurance athletes out there so remember that nice big stride that you've worked on strong heel toe action and as always those arms are going to propel you through as well so as you're seeing yourself yes I can tell you're sitting a little taller in your chair even right now thinking oh yeah I know that I know I can think about those things so then maybe have a boo at the Vancouver Sun website and take a look at the course if you've not done that. It's not a bad idea to have that visual so that you know kind of where you are at any given time and how much is left. It's well marked of course. You'll have water stations and vans and and you know kilometer markers and everything keeping you going along the way but it's it's nice ahead of time to be familiar and go oh yeah I know those streets. Oh it's gonna be a nice run. It's gonna be beautiful out there. Yeah, I think a lot of athletes really do benefit from that idea of almost feeling like they've been there before. Your brain's actually going to make some really great little neural pathways so that then once you really do experience it for real, you'll have this sense like, okay, yeah, this is like how I pictured it. This, oh, right, this is how I, I thought it was going to be moving into it. So it's a nice little mental warm up to um, be able to familiarize yourself. Great idea. It, and, you know, here it is. Here are the folks streaming along Georgia towards, uh, towards Stanley Park in the first mile of the race. And it's a lovely little downhill. You will feel fantastic. The danger, walking or running, is going too quickly because it is a downhill. And your legs will pay for it if you've started too quick for yourself. So take it easy. Enjoy the energy of the crowd. There's going to be somebody in front, behind, and beside you the whole way. So just try to find somebody that is going along at a pace that's similar to what you're comfortable with and by the way you'll have your bib number will correspond to what you put in as your finishing time and it'll be color coded so that when you line up oh my gosh the volunteers are so organized you'll you'll find your start corral according to your bib color and you will then be with people that are you know in a pace group that's similar to yours it's it's organized chaos in a way because it's not actually that chaotic and that's been my experience now for 30 years I'm always surprised how easy it is to get down there find a parking space walk on over to you know Georgia and Burrard area and you know find your spot so awesome yeah and you know Shauna here we are along English Bay I'm sure you're familiar with this area as well it's so lovely mm -hmm. you'll be halfway at this point and you're headed towards BC Place Stadium in that direction now. And, you know, it's about this time that, you know, you will need to find your arms and you will need to self-talk a little bit and say, okay, I feel good, but I'm working. I'm working. Is this pace good for me? And you'll ask yourself that and you can always pick it up and you can always slow it down a little bit. Use the uh, water stations as a gauge. You can always get from one water station to another and make adjustments accordingly. Of course, under the Burrard Street Bridge we go and what is under means you've got to go over and that's why we've done those nice hill that hill training session that you all went through <laughs> remember tighten your stride use those arms you'll get up and over and then it comes down the other side so you'll always have that reprieve but see yourself feeling good feeling strong feel, feeling prepared look at that. I love that picture look at that woman she's just in that moment yeah, we caught her there, isn't that? It is great. She was feeling good. She was feeling good. And this, this, these two gals, they were just euphoric about being where they were. This is now, they're on the Camby Street Bridge. So now you've gone up and down, up and over uh, Burrard. You've come along False Creek, and you've now come up Camby. And from that point, right there, you can see the wonderful balloon archway. Do you see it in your head right now? Oh, my gosh. At that point, 
you will know that I've got this thing. I've got it. I'm there. And you'll have a great boost of energy because it's downhill right through to the finish. So just like Shauna said, a few ideas here just to, you know, not leave everything to the last minute because rushing, you know what? I, I feel like sport is life. Hey, Shauna, in that the things, yes. the things that you do learn in preparation for something like this, uh, you know, they, tran they sort of transfer over to all aspects of life, whether it's managing your household or managing your life at work. And you probably know this to be true already. If you're organized, it just goes better. I'll tell you what, I'm not the most organized person. I am at, I'm a last minute gal, but I've learned that it works better to just have everything set out, all that I need well ahead of time, at least, at least the night before. Don't leave it till the morning when you're, so you're scrambling, okay? Have your travel plan. You'll have already received your, you know, your event bib from your clinic leader. And if you're a participant listening, then you'll be headed down to BC Place to pick up your bib number. And they're so organized down there, you'll have no problems picking it up. Have some extra pins. Sometimes that helps if you, um, you know, can't find them or whatever. Just grab some from home. And then clothing, you know, it's a mixed bag. Like I said, it's sunny right now, but it could be raining on Sunday. We just don't know. So have layers. There's a wonderful program if you've got any gear as an outer layer that you don't care about you can actually be warm in the starting zone and then toss it as you get hot and the organizers and volunteers will pick up that gear and give it to people who need it so it gets transferred to homeless shelters and such so you can do that and i'm a fan of garbage bags it, they keep you warm i put them on when it's raining and then just shed it as i get warm and get moving uh you know and then basics Water, if you're used to carrying water and you got a good little pack, then bring it along with you. Otherwise, know that there's plenty of water on the course and you can make your way over to the tables to make sure you're hydrated. Um, snacks, we don't really need a lot of food when we're out there, to be honest. It's not long enough, but our walkers, if you're going to be out there for you know a couple hours, bring a little something. Bring a little munch with you that you can sort of take in part way just to give you that little boost if necessary. Um, phones, you need them just to take photos and have fun with it along the way. And of course, it helps to know that within your uh, run walk groups, you will likely get separated, uh, at least from the group at large. So I'm sure many of you already have a plan to meet under one of the letters in BC Place Stadium, as in V for Vancouver Sun or P for Peninsula Runners or whatever your group name is. And that way uh, you'll not lose anybody. You'll always be able to find each other under under your designated meeting spot. I don't know. Any comments about some of these things, Shauna? You've been a runner. No, I think this, no, it's all, it's all great. Um, and it's just the more that we can be thinking about this, you've got a few days now to really start putting these things into practice, getting them all gathered together into a bag or setting them aside somewhere at your place. That is going to take up less mental space. You know what it's like, Lynn, in the morning, you know, you're ready to go, you're raring to go, but the last thing you need <laughs> is to be panicking and running around trying to get one of these things in place when you yeah. could have done it, you know, the day before. If you need a costume, get it going. Get it organized. Yeah, get it going now. Get to the dollar store. <laughs> there will be some good Look ones. Look at these there. ones. They're all yeah, see sense of humor. There we go. <laughs> I've seen some crazy things. The centipede ones are the ones that kill me. I can't imagine being attached to somebody and oh, trying to run. No, that covered up. Special person. That takes a very special person to do the joined up ones. Yeah. So yep. uh, and food, you know, it's a common question, okay? By now, you know what foods are familiar to you. You've done lots of workouts and you've had to figure out what you can or can't eat leading up to a training session. So just keep it familiar, even between now and then. No, don't suddenly start eating protein shakes if it's not what you've been used to, even though they sound like they're good for you. Okay, don't, um, don't feel like you have to extreme carbo load leading up to this thing. Just eat normal amounts of food like you've been doing, okay? I will say that the night before, it's generally nicer for digestion to eat earlier. So consider trying to do that. Maybe cut back on the alcohol, okay? Let's sort of lay off of that if you can. Um, and then in the morning, 
your usual coffee is fine. Just don't start drinking coffee that day if it's not something you've done before. Okay. Uh, same deal. What's my favorite pregame meal in the morning? I guaranteed I would have a piece of toast, uh, maybe um, just a light peanut butter layer, just because protein stays with you a little bit longer. And then um, I have a coffee and usually half a banana. That's something that I've suggested over time to many of you and it works for me. So, but again, your food is your own and just keep it familiar. Keep everything familiar, by the way. Don't suddenly put on a new pair of shoes, new socks, even clothing can chafe if it's brand new. So save that for a treat afterwards and stay with what you've already tried successfully up to this point. Yeah, exactly. Now is not the time to take your aunt up on her spicy Brazilian chicken that you've never tried. <laughs> oh, but it Even like though it might vegetable. be tempting. <laughs> exactly. Good advice. And water, of course. Even with water, though, it's not like you're suddenly drinking copious amounts of water. Just sip the water that you've been doing, the one that you've got at your desk during the day and, you know, leading up to. The hydration is done already by race day. It's not like you're suddenly um, replenishing what you've already lost, okay? It's, it's, it's all set up in the, in the days and weeks before the actual event. Um, the rest is the same way, by the way. Today's Thursday. If you can try to get some, you know, decent sleeps the next couple of nights, then even the last night, if you can't sleep a wink, you'll still be fine. It's more the process of it all. It's what you've done leading up to. And if you haven't slept in months, well, good luck to you. No. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, it's not like you haven't slept in months. Now, if that's the case, <laughs> it's going to be a long run. <laughs> so you'll survive no matter what you will. Yeah, I, you know, absolutely. It's, it's a simple little thing. I was just thinking you'll survive. I used to, I used to, and I still do when there's some kind of pressure thing going on in my life, whatever it is, I think to myself, well, you know what? The people in my life that I love are still going to love me. The sun is coming up and going down. It's going to be a new day tomorrow and I'm going to get through this. And that's that's like the very worst possible thing that you could imagine. In fact, the day is going to be a new one the next day. You're all going to go through this one way or another. So it, it works. I, they used to help give me comfort there, just keeping breaking things down to really simple concepts. Um, great idea. So when do you arrive? Well, give yourself time. What do I do? I, I've i driven in. I'm not transit because it's not so convenient from where I live. And I will leave probably about 6.30 and I'll get downtown. I might leave just a little earlier than that, but 6.30 is good. I get downtown by kind of 7.15ish. No problems finding parking between the finish and the start somewhere on one of those neighborhood streets. And then I just take my time walking, moving dynamically, waking myself up as I, you know, head towards the general start zone. And I've never had trouble. So just give yourself, you know, a good hour and a half down there so you can relax, find a porto potty or a restaurant or something so you can do what you need to do there and enjoy the atmosphere. And you can't if you're in a big rush. Oh, people love to stand around, okay? It's really interesting to me. We spend all this time talking about the importance of a warm up. So, walking from your car will help. That's a good way to warm up. And, you know, just do some of those nice dynamic movements to keep your body limbered up, woken up, ready to go. There'll be a warm up team there with music, and hopefully, you'll be able to hear them give direction. And that's always fun to do. But if you can't, just make sure you move a little. You don't have to jump into your corral hours before so that you're sandwiched between people okay you can wait and literally wait till you start to see you know the your group start to move and you can you can jump in at that time and get walking i get claustrophobic i'm all of five feet tall and people are generally taller and i just wait and then jump in you know as the as the group starts to move there's fifty thousand people out there so you can you'll be able to jump in and your time by the way it is recorded when you step on the starting pad. Your chip inside your number will record your start and then record your finish, no matter if you start an hour after the, you know, the gun goes off for the first corral. Okay, so I've talked about that now. 
you'll find your Corel. And I love, look at all those people. Look at the people. You know, I don't it's need amazing. 40 or 50,000 people to go for a run, but, and neither do you, <laughs> but I always say that's my big secret is that really once a year, this is really, really, really motivating. All ages, shapes, and sizes. Yeah. Just like Ottawa Marathon too. Ottawa Fun Race yeah, Weekend. Yeah, it's such a great, it just makes you understand the diversity um, that we have in Canada. It's something to be so proud of and seeing us all moving and doing something really healthy. Oh, it's a vision of health for sure. Um, and so from the, the, the channel there in Penticton, I'm sure that's familiar to some of you. Yes. Uh, there they are with their stroller. And even that puppy with the bandana was in the race last year. There's typically not <laughs> dogs in the race, but somehow they snuck them in there. So there's, <laughs> there is a spot for everybody. The strollers and the Nordic walkers will start near the back along with um, some of our walkers and others that just prefer to start at the back and go at their own pace you'll need to be cognizant of lots of people and be courteous. And that's for sure got to be something you pay attention to. So with those poles and with the strollers, you know, people are generally super happy and, uh, you know, want, want to have a really fun time out there, but you'll have to be sure you're not banging into people. And sometimes you might have to hold those poles until you get where you can really start using them the way you're used to. So, oh my gosh, enjoy it. Enjoy it as you have all the preparation with your groups and the friends and support that you've met in the process. And in the end, that's really what it's all about. Even, even as an Olympic athlete, I, it's wonderful to know people all over the world. And you know, now, as a walker, as a runner, you could literally move or go visit any community. And because of this participation, you'll find an event or a group that you can latch onto. And suddenly, from all kinds of backgrounds you've got people that you can enjoy time with it's the coolest thing yeah it's like or just joining a huge club you didn't even know existed it's oh and that is you know if we don't have people in our lives we can share things with it's just not the same it's not the same gratification so um you've done it you're here we're part of the same club and remember it's just reiterating if you haven't done a bunch of core, don't start right now, okay? Don't start feeling like you better get your sit-ups and planks going. Let's, let's get to that afterwards, which you can do. You can think about, you can start to think about maybe what is the future going to look like after I come down the Camby Street Bridge and head for that balloon archway and all the fun in BC Play Stadium and I'm done and I've finished and I'm victorious what will I do when it's time to think about another challenge? What will we do? Well, I wonder if you've started thinking about it. You probably have. And you've probably talked to people in your groups too about gathering and maybe preparing for another event. Um, from my perspective as your coach, I just hope you've realized how good you feel by doing some kind of activity, this running and walking thing three times a week so keep that going make it important to you even if it's not running or walking maybe you're going to try that zumba class or you're going to just venture out in another in another direction but stay active that's my encouragement to you specifically uh with walkers what should you do you could repeat the program you could consider moving and trying the learn to run program or you could just consider a maintenance program where you're not doing intervals. There's no real goal for a while. Just get out three times a week and vary the amount of time that you're out there walking. Just keep it interesting. And by the way, these maintenance programs, I've sent you in your coaching advice. So you don't have to be thinking, oh, what was that? What, what did she say? It's okay. It's there for you. Um, learn to run. You've, you've now experienced preparing for a full 10K. You can back it off a little bit and just kind of maintain your fitness with a variety of volume out there, remembering that you can always do 10 minutes of running and one minute of walking, or even five and ones, or even one and one. When I'm having a tired day, I just go out there and walk a minute and run a minute because I like the variety. I like how it makes my body feel. You don't have to 
feel like you've got to run steady for long periods of time. You're still beginners, you're newbies, so allow your body to really solidify its fitness level, okay? Um, learn to run grads, though. You could consider the Run Stronger program. It's in your little booklets, it's in your pocket guides, and it's in your coaching advice. So you could jump in there with a friend and move forward with the Run Stronger program, walk when you need to, and try those intervals and see how that goes. And then Run Strongers, again, you can repeat the program. The best athletes in the world have cyclical programs, and it, you gain in confidence. When you repeat the same workout you did you know, three months ago and you try it again now, you're, of course, at a completely different fitness level, and your experience will be different. Okay, you may actually get faster. <laughs> that don't forget as you get older, just maintaining is getting faster. Okay, and I'm speaking from experience there. So, um, take a break from the intervals though for at least a few weeks. Okay, and just try doing some, you know, just simple basic runs. And you can always do ten and ones as well at any time. Sometimes you move even quicker if you inject that walking for one minute once in a while. Okay. Um, we got a, we're whipping through. Thank you for sticking with me here with us, with Shauna and I, uh, choosing another event is a great idea. There's one near you. There are running, walking events to focus on destination events, head to the wine country where Shauna lives and do one of those wine and walk runs. Those are so much. Yeah. Fun. Lots of great ones in the Okanagan. I know they'd love to have you. Oh, so many options. And then you have that motivation, grab a friend, make it fun. Okay, and I've suggested this, but you know what? Try something new. It will even augment your run-walk program if you inject other activities while keeping your running and walking going. You're fit enough to do that, and barring unforeseen circumstances, you can try just about anything. Okay, we're almost there. I get asked this regularly. What about the half? There's a half marathon in a couple of weeks. There's a full marathon. There's one in June. Can I do it? Give yourself time to prepare, okay? A half marathon is more than double what you're going to do on Sunday. So, uh, it, you know, it's not to say you couldn't complete one, but would it become a lifestyle piece? Do you risk injury? All of those things come into play. So how about setting a goal if that's something that you'd like to do? If you'd like to run or walk farther, choose an event a few months from now and find a preparation, a, a program to follow, okay? Uh, here we go. This gal, just the sky's the limit. This gal is from the Dunbar Clinic, and she told her story last year. She never dreamed she'd walk 5K, let alone run 10K and climb to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. And that's her wearing her Sunrun in Training shirt right there. So, you know, it's amazing. It's, it's, uh, the success that's fantastic the success stories wait a minute maybe there's some of those the success success stories are wonderful and i congratulate you at this point in time all that you've been through and where you've come from we do have a marathon half marathon program that you can find you can purchase a book on our website or it's in various bookstores and that will help you achieve a half and full marathon goal if that's something you you would be motivated to try. Do I think you need to move? Does it does moving forward mean increasing your distance? Absolutely not. It does not. Okay. You can do a 5K every other week. You can choose not to do events if that's not what you want to be doing. You don't need to run farther to be successful. And arguably, running shorter and walking shorter will keep you healthier for longer. Folks. This is it. Whatever you decide, do keep it going. It's been my pleasure to be your virtual coach. Shauna, thank you for all those wonderful tips today. Thank well, you. Thanks for the invite. I'm so excited for everyone, and I know they're going to have an amazing day on okay. Sunday. They are. I can't wait. I'll be on the Canby Street Bridge, everybody. I will be cheering, and you know I'll be back again next year. I hope you will, too. So from SportMed BC and all of our sponsors, Good luck. Have your best day. Bye for now.